All right, in this video, uh, I'm going to be installing my Drupal uh, content management system and a couple of things I'm going to be doing in conjunction with that. So there's there's going to be setting up uh, Git to have the files stored with and I've also got to move my old website that, that's on there. So uh, if you if you were following along with the previous videos, you know that uh, on my Apache server I have I have the outsourced, outsourced math uh, directory which is filled with uh, just uh, waiting page content. I'm going to take the files that are in there and move them to another sort of a I don't know. Uh, a place where they're kind of in cold storage but they might be useful so digging around to my bear www and then uh, this should be fairly empty I'm not going to do anything with that today though uh, that'll be another time so I'm gonna take my ordinary outsourced math right now I'm, I'm showing 25 of 42 entries. Uh, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but if I do a select all, I, yeah, okay, selected 25 entries, right, so I'm only getting the ones, I'm only getting the, oh, I don't know how to deselect all, I'm only getting the ones that, that are showing, so if I go to 50 entries and then reselect, now we've got all 42. So I'm going to cut those from this folder and I'm going to move to the HTML folder which just has crap in it right now and I'm going to drop those in here. So now the old outsourcemath.com is there. Um, the, let's see, uh, so before, before I get started with any of the install, I figure why not go ahead and set up my git from the get-go. I want to create a project and I want to call it Outsource Math. I'm not importing from anything right now. Okay, so we're going to have that project created now. And I've got some information going on here where uh, this is important for uh, trying, to, trying to clone it to other places. I'm going to copy that URL to clipboard. So uh, on, on this server, we have uh, I, we have no uh, git thing going on yet um, so this is my actual web server and uh, you've got So you've got your actual name and then you've got 
your username that you're going to go by email with. So these, those two settings, just uh, they're they're an organizer. They're not login information. They're just an organizer in your your uh, your Git service for marking who did what and when. So now I'm in uh, the the main directory there, and <clears throat> I want to clone. Uh, this is where I think I want this now. Oh, where to go? I want this on the clipboard, and I'm gonna get clone. I'm going to clone that and I'm going to clone it to so we're cloning the remote repository to that local directory oh crap Well, that's odd.
Okay, so uh, we're cloning there, so I don't know how to throw the username and password in here. So I'm going to be cutting a little of this video out. Okay, after a few clicks around and reading, uh, it turns out that you have to have your username colon password at before your URL of your Git repository. So it was just so easy using the Git G software that I didn't realize it'd be more difficult with the command line. So uh, let's see. So now we've left off, we're in the WW directory, and I want to change directories to the outsourced math. Oh shit, I gotta write the whole freaking thing out. Because there's two similar ones. So, alright, so we're in there. List all files long form. And you see git has thrown its own little folder in there so you know your git is working and the repository is on. Um, so we're going to leave it there for now. And uh, something else that I noticed that, that, was, that was going wrong during those command lines is somehow when the first error happened this folder disappeared. It wasn't there anymore. I just, it just for some reason went away during the failure efforts. So, so if you get uh, a failure in one of your git clone commands, you might not have the directory there anymore. I don't know when it vanished from from the the spot, but it was gone. All right. So moving on. So. Uh, depending on how long it's been since I made this video and when you actually watch it, uh, this, this link I'm about to use might be different, but uh, you want to be in your file manager and you're going to upload or download from a remote URL and uh, you you basically you get that download from your Drupal people so um, the install instructions have the link um, but this page right here with the green buttons that green button has the URL for it so uh, that's basically what you're going to do to get your your link for your most current version whenever you're watching this and then uh, the other thing is in your documentation section you've got your user guide and uh, part of your user guide is is installing so that's that's where a good bit of your your how-to is going to come from for for what your requirements are things you got to do to get that put on okay so so we're going to download that that zipped file and now it's there and we want to uncompress it so boom we're extracting the archive and now you see it's made a folder the uh, the Drupal you got uh, 22 entries so you got your subfolders in your files that's essentially all the files you need to make a Drupal site start working so we're going to cut those and we're gonna switch over to here and we're gonna paste those uh, so let's see what's the next thing we want to do 
Oh yeah. Okay. So notice that these the ownership on these is root root, and uh, you really don't want that. You want you want uh, all your web served files to be www dash data for at least for Linux and uh, Ubuntu and Apache. I know that's correct. So we want to change the ownership and the trick is to have the recursive box checked there but so the username and group name are uh, are a default install on Ubuntu. If you looked around in, in your system, users and groups, you would see those there. You didn't create them, those were just built by default. So now all of our folders, subfolders, files, all of that are accessible by the normal web serving system. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's see what happens with uh, get add all. Let's see what goes on. So now those are staged, I believe, for the for the push. So when we commit, we're going to have a message that uh, So that's the message that's going to go along with the push that we do. Everything that's in the outsourced math folder just got committed with that message. And then uh, right now it should be over here. If I checked, there should be still, uh, should be nothing going on here. Um, And after this next command, there should be something going on there. So, so git push origin master is going to throw all those up to the remote server, the remote repository where things are safely stored. a little longer than I thought but there you go okay so now over here on this server we have an event that happened uh, those are still all empty but let's see project home now you've got all those things are up on your thing on your uh, up on your remote repository with GitLab and uh, I think that's as much as I want to talk about because I don't know that much about it. Now down here um, on, on this local machine instead of that server I've got git g and let's see select and manage projects where's my pull so apparently the interface I have over here, uh, the git g, that's just for visualizing things that you do with the command line. So I had to git pull my repository down into my directory where I'm cloning it, or yeah, where it's a clone of. So, so let's see here. Okay, so this folder a little while ago was empty and now it has all the things that that Drupal 8 puts in there. 
so I can work on I can work on this uh, this website directly off of my workstation let's see where's my refresh oh something's going on it's refreshing so this is uh, this Git G project is is a graphical user interface made for visualizing how changes have taken place using the Git software. It's not a complete interface for using Git. a little uh, a little bit of a weight there all right so while that's going on let's move on to other things so uh, the composer software this is a composer is a type of a program in PHP um, you could search for it in apt, but uh, I know that you just, it's its there. Composer, there's a bunch that'll come up when you click Composer, and somewhere in the list is just the word Composer, and that's the one you want. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and install the Composer. Composer has uh, a nice easy command related to uh, related to uh, Drupal installations, Drupal 8. Um, <clears throat> and it, it does a bunch of uh, tasks for you. So now that we got this, that piece of software on here, um, We can go ahead and uh, let's see what directory am I in right now? Okay, so I'm I'm in the directory that that my new Drupal eight site is going to work in. You want to be in that top directory and then you're going to execute this command composer install and what that does is it works on uh, a directory I think it's called sources directory but uh, it uh, does a bunch of wonderful things Vendor. I think it's the vendor webs. That, that vendor directory gets populated with all all kinds of necessary mini connections and programs. So uh, so that people like me that don't want to get too technical can actually install something as massive and powerful as Drupal eight. There you go. Okay, so it did a whole lot of things for us here. Bada boom, bada bing. So that's what the install command in Composer did for you in your Drupal directory. So just see. Uh,
So Vendor now has a whole bunch of things that uh, that will make your Drupal 8 work better. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to be doing here is you need a, a database and a user ID that your Drupal 8 site is going to work with. So this particular site I believe is going to be better working in the MySQL type database. So this also uh, I did I think I did mention it before but uh, you can you can let me see you can use your uh, You can use your webman interface in order to do this, or you can use phpMyAdmin. The, the instructions on Drupal tell you how to do it with phpMyAdmin and a couple other ways. Uh, they, they also show you how to do it with the command line. Um, I just figured why not try to do it with Webman this time so uh, we're gonna do that now um, let's see user permissions oh you know what too bad, so sad for me. I don't see a thing that uh, global options databases. I don't see. I see create a new database. I don't see create a new user. Okay, so I guess I'm not doing it with that. All right, so over here in PHP My Admin, we're going to create a new user. Let's see, where do we use user accounts? And I'm going to add a new user account. Username. Um, Host and uh, the host is an important thing. Uh, you want local host, I believe. I think the reason why I had trouble making a user, a unique user ID instead of the Drupal 8 default is because I didn't use local host. I used the host name of the data, the, the, the server that it was on. So I think that referencing was a problem. So. I think generating a password is a really good idea when it comes to this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of things that are problematic when it comes to uh, uh, with picking passwords and trying to be random. Um, but this is. This generator, this password generator, is very good. So I take no bones about using that. All right. Uh, they, uh, the 
Drupal 8 says to, to do the same name, grant all privileges. Um, oh, sorry, not that, not that. The, they want you to, to set up the user like this and create the database with the same name and all privileges. So that seems like the best, least problematic way to do it. And then they suggest that if you want a different database name, go in, edit, and change the name with the interface. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so there you got, and this is one of the reasons I like these PHP things, is they show you a command line that was done to create a, a thing. So we want to go into here in this database, and we want to go to its, let's see, let's see. No, 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 where do I want? I want to go... I want to go to the main screen, I want to go to databases, and I want to... Where's my editor for that? Operations, I think that's it. Yeah, operations. There it is. Okay, so rename a, rename a database. So. And then go gives your uh, gives your commit there for that particular name. So uh, let me see. So while we're in we're in that database right now, let's just look for users privileges. Who's got privileges and there we go so we got our original user has all privileges all set so that step is over with in uh, setting up the database um, next thing the instructions tell you to do is make sure your Apache web server is set up correctly for it, so they want you to, to have your URL pointing at the directory that your Drupal 8 files are in. And then, um, at this point, hitting this should run the setup page for, and it didn't. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. There we go. Okay, so so that's how Drupal should look if everything went well. Uh, and at this point, except for making sure the, the database signs in correctly, you could take it from here. You don't need to watch anymore. Uh, I am going to do couple of things at the end here though after I'm done with this so I'm not sure if you want to stick around for it. Let me see clean your let's see what you people are using clean your house but it's not enabled it's using clean your house enable clean URLs
Okay, I thought my okay. I um, I know my mod for rewrites already on. It's complaining that uh, mod rewrite. So there, yeah, rewrite is definitely enabled. That's been enabled for a while. Um, so let's see what else could be wrong here. We wanna head back and let's take a look inside my port 81. Got something. I think that's correct. Oh, I never use save and close. Um, there's something else that I just remembered. The uh, let's see this. Where is, uh, where did it go? Operations. Ah, uh, ah, that's, that's it. I forgot this. I messed that up. That, I do not want that one. I want, what's the normal one? Balls. I'm really bad at this today. I don't know if I didn't have enough coffee or what. All right, let's see. There's two coalition coalitions that uh, that Drupal eight likes, and it's easy to change this if you haven't if you don't have data in yet or you're creating it brand new, but. Um, we're looking for the UTF-8 Generals. UTF-8 General. Um, CI or Unicode. Okay, so that's one that's good and Unicode is the other. I like Unicode. So we're going to go ahead and commit that. Good thing I noticed that before I went too far, but okay. So let's see how we're doing. Did I close the tab? What the hell did I do? Okay. So let's see here. Okay, so the requirements, boom, done. Okay, so that was it, override all. So I'm using the MySQL. My database name is somewhere here. Database username is database password is and I went in and used advanced options before when I wasn't using localhost as it and uh, I'm not going to this time so it's just going to assume localhost let's see if it makes the connection
Okay, it made the connection this time, so that's the, the trick. You can use a alternative username and database name as long as you leave it localhost. You won't have a problem. I don't know if in the future there'll be uh, you can use a remote database. Have your data pulling from one server and your site files from another server. I don't know if that would be good. Seems like too much network traffic to slow down a site. Oh, okay, so so there's uh There's our user interface. Oh, oh, getting back to here. Okay. Better. Okay, so two things going on at once here. I got the remote. Okay, so so we got a lot of information that was built up in here. Um, in the Git G. processor working hard so so this is this is basically what I as a logged in user see on my very first login on the site so uh, I'm not going to edit anything right now but uh, you can you can change a bunch of things the for your default right away like your your logo uh, your icon that appears up here for some browsers and whatnot um, the thing that you're supposed to do, though, uh, as as soon as you're at the as soon as you're done at this point, the thing that you're supposed to do and should do immediately is you're going to go into admin report status report because there could be something that that is wrong at this time. So, okay, security update is available. Available updates. So here we go. Back up your code, back up your database. Oh, speaking of databases, um, let's just go. Uh, back to the top since we're kind of done with that um, now the oh it looks like I haven't refreshed so note that the the Drupal database which was empty 
after the install has all kinds of tables and stuff for your website to work with. And as you alter your installation, you add fields and so, so forth on different pages, you're going to have that change accordingly. Oh yeah, the user guide, uh, you should also go ahead and read through the entire thing. You know, start to finish, just just click in from right from point one, read along, and then just keep passing through these things start to finish if you've never used Drupal before. Alright, so let's see, let's see, where are we? I did this once before. Maintenance mode, boom. So delete everything except for the sites folder and HT access and robots texts. If I had customized them, I haven't, but why not? Okay, so sites, HT access, robots. I am going to um, I am going to do that though. All right, so. 50 entries, showing 23, check all, we don't want to do sites, HT access, or, I don't have a robot, there it is, I haven't edited it yet, but so we are going to delete, oh, no, 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 that's not a, you don't delete that one, alright, so we're going to delete them all, I find it hard to believe that I'm deleting the vendor. Well, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Whatever. Alright, so up here, source file upload to the current directory, just Instead, we're going to take the full tar up here. Um, oh, I didn't want it there. Uh, let's cut that. Let's paste that. Go ahead and unzip that. Let's go in there and we want to get rid of its sites. We want to get rid of its HT access and we want to get rid of its robots. So we're going to delete those three. Remove selected. Okay, so we're going to select all. Take those and put them into here. Alright, now uh, just because I'm scared because I think that That our last command needs to be rerun, but I, I'm not sure. Feels like it should be. Okay, so uh, I think that just finished running the second time. Okay, so let's get out of here. So 
update procedure, you put all those things in, update PHP, okay. So before I do that specifically, there, there was another thing that I wanted to do and um, this isn't an important step, but I like it. There's, there's a little trick in the HT access that, let's see how we're doing here. What do I got so far? It's a pretty big file compared to what I was gonna do. Let's see. I'm going to put my snippet of code This is supposed to get rid of the www if anybody puts it in. I hope that works. Alright, so back here we're supposed to reload this page and we'll have the upgrade Three dot seven done. So, all right, so we're good. Now, just to check one thing, I need a incognito window. Ah, the rewrite didn't work. So that is hitting my my default page and that is hitting yeah I got some problems here see if I did something wrong in Apache alright where's my my there I want the 81 let's see Oh, okay.
Oh, and just something else I want to slip in here while talking about it. Besides the uh, networking addresses thing that's going on, um, you also have uh, the ability to do these re redirects where you do a pattern match to have it switch to a subdomain. So you got a subfolder off of the root directory for that server, and it's going to jump to rewrite that URL that the person typed in their browser if they tried to go into this folder instead of the proper subdomain. So that's that, and also there's another thing. Um, what was it? What was it? What was it? Oh, oh, uh, it's it's important that that your roots your default servers have the the IP address internally of your your serving device whatever your your servers IP address is it wants it there with all of them otherwise uh, things go screwy with with the way it uh, picks through this list of, of correct servers that so my redirects are all named in here um, and there's a tricky thing I found. The I don't have a good way to rewrite it, so I always spell Porsche wrong when I write it. I don't know why. So just to show you that you can put in common misspellings with your subdomain header, and people that misspell will still wind up on your your page. So all right, let's see. Try that again. Did I? I forgot. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, beautiful. So it was the alias was missing. So that fixed it. So so I'm I'm good. I'm happy and that's time to stop uh, the recording.